Hey, what's up everyone? So today's Monday and as usual, here's the update for the tank. And there's a little game of what's new and what's missing to play in this one. So let's get to it. So okay, uh, today's update's gonna start with a little bit of what's missing and what's new in the tank. So what I'll do is I'll stop talking for a minute and give you a little time to look at the tank and figure it out. Okay, so have you figured it out yet? Well, Let's get a close up of the tank and I'll reveal the answer. Okay, so ha as you can see, the thing that's new in the tank is I have a copper band butterfly. The reason I picked up the copper band butterfly is that I have a few spots of Aptasia in the tank that are really hard to reach, so using Aptasia X or Calc Wasser Paste was kind of impossible without ripping apart the rocks. So I'm giving this a try first to see if he takes care of the problem that way with him just eating it. Reefing with Billy Pipes called me up and showed me that there was a big sale at one of the local fish stores and they were selling these guys um, for a price that I couldn't pass up. Out of all the ones, he's the one that readily ate and also uh, the one that had no spots on him whatsoever. It's a big adjustment to get used to this type of fish in my tank because he does have certain ways about him, the ways that he swims that are kind of alarming, but I'm getting used to him. The yellow tang is giving him a, a kind of a rough welcome, as you can see right there. He does chase him from time to time, but usually most of the time it's pretty peaceful, unlike the thing that's missing in my tank. Unfortunately, um, a big problem arose with the powder blue tang. As you know, I was having issues with the powder blue going after the hippo tang. Well, when this guy went into the tank, the powder blue went ballistic. So he was constantly going after him and rather than put him through stress and put the whole tank through stress, um, I was able to net the powder blue and he's currently cooling his heels off in a quarantine tank. Um, that I, uh, well basically it's a frag tank, uh, so it's a combination frag and, you know, timeout tank for him right now. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with him, uh, whether I'm going to sell him or, um, as you know that I'm kicking around the idea of going to a 125, so based on how quickly I can get that tank, uh, will probably be one of the reasons uh, that whether I keep him or not. So, uh, he's a pretty cool fish and I enjoy watching him swim. It's just the fact that right now he's a little bit skinny for me. So, uh, I'm gonna try and rectify that. Now, as far as an update on the coral is concerned, let's start over here first on the frag rack. The Sunny Ds have still been withdrawn. As you can see here, they don't have any uh, brown slime on the heads anymore so I'm just um, checking them out and see if they'll pop their heads back again I may have to give them another dip but I'll make that decision in a couple days this is the results of the dip on the utter chaos I have I believe it's only four yeah it's four polyps of the utter chaos that survived thank you very much get in my way and also there's some fire and ice zoas that were on that rock as well so every day it's a checking to see because there's other there's two other polyps as you can see right there in the center of the screen that haven't come up yet so it looks like at least for the other chaos I may get away with what happened to him and the dip worked and I'll be able to repopulate 25 polyps, and if four live, um, that would mean 
21 of them I lost. So we'll see what happens with those. The Euphilia Garden is really doing well. Uh, this frog spawn has been with me the longest. Um, may have some news coming out as far as um, its rarity in the in the hobby. I haven't been able to see a lot of these, but we'll g I'll give you an update when the time is right and I find out more about it. All the frog spawn and hammer corals are doing really, really well and coloring up very nicely. My torches are just doing well. The pink, pink frog spawn, as you can see from last week, has got, has, its tentacles have um, colored up more now. You can't see it all into the coral at all, as opposed to last week and the week prior, where you can see, you could be able to see, even at the tips, straight through the coral to the rock. When I was getting the powder blue out, I knocked the red mushrooms to the sand but I'm going to leave them here for now because they're right up against that rock and maybe they'll populate up. Now my white lights are on even though it's showing some blue so the Wellsy is showing like it's a little dirty right now. This is the better, best way I can put it. But it does change color under the lights. As soon as my blues will come on that'll start really um, showing off the orange really well and also the stripes in the orange walls come out even more with the blue lights on. The fungia plate is doing well and growing. Uh, rainbow acans I put over here are growing and, and pushing out more polyps. This candy cane as you can see, no ill effect from the video that I showed last week of it retracting and it's growing more. The acan garden itself is filling out this piece right here um, is looking like now it's putting more polyps out more and more every day and it's growing so it should encrust itself all over that plug the micromusa is doing well and all this is pretty much I feed them uh, the larger a cans I'll feed mysis and the smaller ones I will feed reefroids and they do really well Okay, so now I switched the blue lights on and put the gel filter on the uh, camera so this way the colors can, you can actually see uh, what I mean when I say that some of the corals in the tank, even though they appear dirty on, uh, with the white lights on, that they fluoresce even better uh, once the blues are out. So let's get back to the update. Uh, moving up, the birthday coral from Billy Pipes or the Leptoceras as it's known um, has started doing something that it hasn't before and that is as you can see there are little hairs coming off of it those are sweeper tentacles that are actively looking for food in the tank and I can only attribute this to um, starting the reefroids program uh, on feeding the tank so now this is act actively putting out sweepers in search of food. Moving up, this is the Mont encrusting Montipora from Fish of Hex. Uh, you can see that it's encrusting downward on the rock and the crown that I referred to last week is now less of a crown, but the points are now getting higher. This is a way that colony, the name escapes me right now. I just threw up here for an experiment to see um, how they react to being up closer to the surface of the water and light and I'll go in more in detail on that when we go to the zoanthic garden the bird's nest is growing as well as the neon green frog spawn frog skin in the back the neon green frog uh, skin is uh, starting to branch out over here and reacting to its place on the upper level of the rock work really well as well as the cat's paw coral over here, um, it's really a slow growing coral and it's very hard to see from day to day the growth that's happening on this piece. But as far as growth, uh, the Montipora cap never disappoints and even from last week has noticeably gotten larger and 
is showing more and more how it's going to start shaping up. The Barney Acro from Jason Fox is really getting larger here. And you can see the neon green tab right there, the rear edge of this coral and behind uh, where it's near the rock is really fluorescent green. It's starting to dig itself into this shelf that I put in. So um, when it gets larger, it should really form a nice base being it's grabbing onto this rock. The Red Satosa corals are really filling out. I can see a difference between locations just on this piece alone. You can see that there's a piece right there. The polyps aren't really extending from that piece, but all of these, you can see the polyp extension on them. And also on the tips, the tips are getting fuller and fuller and larger as they grow. Here is another piece that's showing, again, here's that white part that I always suspect is bleaching, but it never is. It'll soon grow over that, and that's the way it, it expands on that plug. Here's the main colonies of neon green frog skin acros. They're getting larger. Um, as soon as I put reefroids in the tank, the pops come out and they start searching for it. So... This coral is really doing well in my tank, as well as the, the piece that I uh, put in here that was the broken off base of where the rock is that it came in on. It's growing in and filling that out and starting to grow up and off of it. Now moving down to the sand again, here are the Favia area. And this yellow tang is really being the pain in my neck today. Um, they're growing, this one's growing really, really slightly, and this one's growing really well. As you can see, uh, with the lights on, you can see the reds and yellows and greens down along the side of the rock that it was on, and also the fact that it's encrusting on the rock that it, that I glued it to. Blasto's doing really well, and there are babies underneath. Wow, really? Thank you. There are babies underneath um, the walls of these, so that I'm really impressed about. Now, onto the Zoantha Garden. First of all, this fungia plate is filling out. It's never been this full before. I mean, it's, it's filled up and then gone flat, but it really enjoys this spot. And new colors are coming out on the tentacles, more neon greens. So I'm really surprised about how this coral is responding to this section of the tank. Here are the Worldwide Coral Pandora Corals and the Rastas. They're, the Rastas are growing a lot better than this one, but this one is growing in my tank with four polyps and um, they open up every day without fail. So I really enjoy the colors of, of these corals a lot. So now the rest of the Zoas, Fire and Ice, the Cat's Eyes, and all the other corals in the garden are really doing well. And you can see what I mean by the reason I put the ones up on the rock. See right back here how they're up and they're stretched up like they're looking for light. So I wanted to see if that's, are they actively looking for light or if it's just the way they grow because now I will find out with the way that this group grows. So, Moving on to the last item in the tank uh, is the overflow section and the Hollywood stunners are really, do, really growing and most noticeable out of all my corals about their growth and how they are um, starting to chalice up. The purple digi and the red digi are growing and I actually had knocked off, let me just move this magnifying cleaner, and I knocked off this one and this one trying to get the powder blue out of the tank. So I just re-glued them up and I also knocked off that piece of neon green frog spawn, frog skin, I always want to call it a frog spawn. I knocked off this piece of neon green frog skin so 
Uh, I decided to glue it up here with another small frag because they were doing really well up there. Now, that piece of red digi and that piece of red digi you see sticking out there were really, really tiny up until about a week ago and they started showing growth and now they're growing really well in my tank. So I'm happy that I'll have some red digi filling out this tower and giving it some color because the purple digi is really a dark coral and it has a tendency to be pretty boring. So that pretty much, I know this was a long update, but I wanted to get a lot of it out. Uh, what I'll be doing um, this week is I have a acclimation, how I acclimate new fish to the tank, and you'll see me acclimating uh, the butterfly. So all the fish are doing really well, and that'll bring us to the end of the video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and uh, give a like, comment, and share it. And if you're a new, new person to the channel, click the subscribe button. And as always, as I end every video, this is Scott, and I'll see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.